how could we or how can we as a body be prophetically ready if we're caught up in the agenda of the enemy? His agenda is to keep us distracted. Mm -hmm. His agenda is to keep us um, operating hopelessly. Mm -hmm. His agenda is to keep us from unifying yep. and getting a grip because if in turn he can keep us distracted in our mind on things that don't matter and keep us in a place of unforgiveness, mm -hmm. <laughs> keep us in a place of motive driven, driven, wanting a position. And here's the mm -hmm. thing. What's, what's funny to me is people don't think they're driven by social media. Yeah. But they are. You, they are. Because you can't say, oh, no, it doesn't affect me. But as you read those stats, bro, mm -hmm. what that tells me is a lot of people are walking around empty. Ooh, spiritually empty. And they're empty. They're empty because they're looking for something to fulfill them that can't. Yeah. Because if in turn you're getting to a place of depression because of social media, mm -hmm. that's because you're looking for something to fill you that's not supposed to fill you. Yeah. The word of God is is the is what's supposed to fill you. The God Jesus is the one that fills you. Yeah. But because you're looking, because here's the thing. The thing that fills us gives us fuel Come on. to go through life the way it's supposed to, uh, it, the way we're supposed to, because what we can't do is, like I stated earlier, we cannot avoid what's prophetically getting ready to happen. We can't. There are things that are going to happen in this world that we cannot, we cannot stray away from according mm -hmm. to the book of Revelations. Mm -hmm. There are things, it's already happening. Matthew 24 is already coming to life. Yeah. There are wars, rumors of wars, the love of men is waxing cold yeah are you kidding me i'm looking at videos of and i don't know if you've seen it you probably because you've been off but there are videos of young people fighting their grandmothers i saw a 10 year a, a little kid a young man start beating up his grandmother mm. that had and he and it has nothing to do with race because it was a, it was a young black man beating up his grandmother mm. i saw another video the love of many wax cold mm. of a young lady getting fighting with her grandmother. Mm. Are you kidding me? If you look at this, this recent killing of the young lady that got killed. Yeah. When, if you look at the full 30 minute yeah. video, it has nothing to do with race. It's race. It's all spiritual. If you, if you look Ooh. at the video and you watch it from beginning to end, he knew that there was a mental issue with the mm -hmm. young lady. It was a it was a problem with the young lady. But the moment she said, I rebuke you, you in, in the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus, my God, because he had time. She cowered down. Mm -hmm. So it was a premature murder, bro. Mm -hmm. He already had murder On in his, his brain. Mm -hmm. He didn't know how it was going to happen. He just looked for an excuse mm -hmm. that's spiritual. That has yeah. nothing to do with race. And the agenda of the enemy is to make us feel like it's only has to do with race. Yeah. Yeah. We're distracted. We're distracted. And spiritually, we're not being fed correctly. And then when it's time, when it, when it's time to go through mentally, the things that we have to go through, we're not filled because we're stuck on social media. And you know what? Oh man, I'm about to go off on the deep end. We about to jump. We about to go there. <laughs> the reason why is because Ezekiel chapter nine talk. Verse four through six. The Lord was showing me this the other day. So verse four, he says, the Lord said to him, pass through the city, through Jerusalem, put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan over the abominations and are committed in it. So when he's saying they're sighing and groaning over it, it means that they're mourning or they're in um, deep anguish. They are they they hate the sin and the abomination that's going on in the land. Mm -hmm. Verse five. And to the others, he said in my hearing, pass through the city after him and strike your eye uh, and strike your eyes shall not spare and you shall not show no pity. Mm. Kill old men outright, young men and maidens, little children, women, but touch no one on whom the mark. And this is the part right here that, that, that stood out to me the most. And, 
begin at my sanctuary. The problem that we see in this nation, the problem that we see that's happening all over the world. Oh. The reason why it's happening is because what are we preaching in our churches? How are we equipping people? We were just talking about this. How are we making people mature in the body of Christ? We are too busy trying to grow our social media platforms. We are too busy trying to grow our churches <laughs> using this strategy and that strategy. We're trying to do this. We're trying to do that. We're constantly on the road. But while we're doing all this, guess who's busy? Satan. He's busy. He's busy. While we are distracted by social media, while we are distracted by all these things, we want to grow. We want to be the next transformation church. We want to be the next elevation. <laughs> we want to be the next this. We want to be the next big thing. But what are you doing? And don't know. You're leaving the saints depleted. People are hungry. They want God. And the reason why that young lady said, I rebuke you in the name of, the, in the name of Jesus is because she knew, she knew what she was dealing with. Bro. And, the, and, and what the Bible tells us, whenever you call on the name of Jesus, what shall happen? You shall be saved. Bro, it, she knew from the beginning because when she called the operator, she said, don't get off the phone. Don't get off the phone. Don't. Her mm-hmm. spirit was uncomfortable. Was, was there. It, it was uncomfortable. Lord, I don't care. I, and I'm, 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 I'm going to say this real quick. <laughs> I don't care. I love. I know I, I did a whole thing on, on mental illness and whatnot. But let me be clear. God knows how to speak to his people regardless okay. of whatever mental illness state you're in. Okay. You can have whatever mental illness state, but one okay. thing was clear on that video is that she knew enough to call on the name of Jesus. She was uncomfortable, bro. She was uncomfortable. She felt that spirit. Spirits, whew, when you are, are spiritually inclined with God, you know when there is something dark and demonic, when something there's a right. dark presence that has just entered into your room or entered into your realm. She felt that. I don't care if you, you can say she was schizophrenic. You can say that she was bipolar. You can say all these different things, but she had the conscience of mind. Something wasn't right to know that something went right from the beginning, from the beginning. And then to say the one of the last words to come out of her mouth is I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And that's what see. And that's what the church is not. Prepared that's for. what the church is not preparing people. Persecution. Perse- persecution is coming. Because when we standing up and saying things like I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us what's going to happen. It tells us clearly in the the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, you, you read the first seven verses, first seven or 14 verses. You're reading about what they're going to do to the people in the body of Christ who call out the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're going, there is going to be a suffering. And here's the thing, going back to your statement, you made the statement is what are we teaching? People are so busy trying to be philosophical that we're getting away from the fundamentals. Mm. The fundamentals of praying, the fundamentals of seeking after God and how we seek after God, Mm -hmm. the fundamentals of even understanding what our purpose is Mm -hmm. as believers. Our purpose is to glorify God, period. There is nothing in the Bible that talks about happiness. Mm -hmm. There is nothing in the Bible that talks about certain things that we're going after as uh, as people. But there is uh, a such thing that talks about our purpose. There is a time to be uh, born. There is a time uh, for to die. There is a time to plant. There is a Mm -hmm. time that pluck up Mm -hmm. um, to pluck up that which have been planted. Those things are solidifying what time is doing, what the seasons are going to happen in our life and what our purpose and all of that is because at the end of that, it says all things are to um, God does things beautiful in his timing. Yeah. That's Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. Yeah. So because he does everything beautiful in his timing, there are things that are going to happen in our lives again that we can't avoid. And I got to keep speaking that because your goal has to be to glorify God. How do I glorify God? I wake up and I and I give him praise. I give him thanks. How do I glorify God? I go to work and I operate in excellence. I see that manager who may or that supervisor who may be having a rough day because 
does and their rough day may come off on you and you go into them and ask them how are you doing are you okay I just want to know how you doing yeah. as a believer we have to be able to see those mm-hmm. things we can't be just prophetic in a building in come a church on. when we got a microphone are you prophetic when you're at your job are you prophetic when you go to the store are yeah. you prophetic when you're around your family or yeah. those um, that you're just walking past when you see somebody just sitting on a curb and don't know what else to do are you prophetic enough to stop and say hey Jesus loves you yeah. is there something that I can do for you can I and, and, and you don't have to have money because no. Peter made the statement he said silver and gold have, have I, I none. none but such as I have I give you in the name of Jesus rise up and walk we have the ability yes Lord we have the power yeah. we have the authority to help people who are hopeless but if we're stuck on social media come on if we're stuck in ourselves come on if we're stuck in a mindset that gets us nowhere, that leads us to vanity, to yeah. emptiness, yeah. then in turn, we won't be able to be effective in these last and evil days because we are in the last and evil days. We but we keep playing it in the agenda of the enemy by being divided. Yeah. A house divided cannot, cannot stand. Cannot stand. It cannot stand. And we're not standing. Because when the enemy is in like a flood, it's easy to quote it. Mm-hmm. When he comes in like a flood, it's the spirit that lifts mm-hmm. up a standard. But are we lifting up a standard? We can't because Ooh. now there is so much depression that is going on. There is so much anxiety. There is so much frustration that is going on. And we keep getting away from the fundamentals of things. Mm-hmm. Are we really seeking God? Yeah. That is the main thing as yeah. believers. When you you got to go back to the time you got saved and there was a hunger. Yeah. Are we really mm. seeking after who God is on a regular basis? It's not going to be easy. There are going to be days. My grandmother says something to me that blessed my whole life. She said, Marcus, because you're in this season right now, there may not be an explanation, but you got to praise them anyhow. Come on. She said, you got to praise him anyhow, because you may not get an explanation and you don't need an explanation because do you know the God that you serve? Come on. Do you really believe in him? Because right now it's time to prove that you believe in the God that you serve. serve. Praise him anyhow. It doesn't feel good. Praise Praise him him anyhow. anyhow. You're crying. Praise him anyhow. It hurts. Praise him anyhow. Everybody walked out on you. Praise Praise him him anyhow. anyhow. Mm. You got to have that. You got to have that. You got to have And we got to equip people to that. Man, listen. We got to build people up to that. Listen. The problem is, it's like, oof, oof. I can go on a tangent about this. And, yeah, is that ahead. we go preach ahead. heavy against all of these things. We talk about all of these different things. We even brought politics into our pulpit. Come on. To where we talk about that more than we talk about the word of God. Come on. We'll talk about Trump. We'll talk about Kamala. We'll talk about all these different people. We'll lay down abortions. We lay down all these things. People shouldn't be gay. Shouldn't be this. But we will rarely... Break this down to its bare minimum to the place to where we where people can fully understand what God is saying in this season. Do we have people need something to stand on, but we need I, something to believe with. There's there is only one faith, it's only one faith, <laughs> one baptism, one Lord, one Lord. I don't even think that people understand <laughs> what that even means. Come on, Doc. like Ephesians four and five, like this. So anyone who's, if you come across one faith for the very first time, one faith is based off of Ephesians 4 and 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's about oneness. It's about us being united. It's about unity. It is not about anything that is, you know, weird. You know, it's not about DEI, whatever, you know, all the other stuff, inclusion, things like that. No, mm-hmm. it's about all of us as Christians, as a body believer, being on the same mind, worshiping the same Lord, being in the same mindset Talk to you. as one. It's not about anything else. The problem with this country, the problem with the body of Christ is that just going back to Ezekiel 9, we have allowed the culture to dictate how we should operate as a church. We have allowed the culture to tell us we should be doing this. Mm -hmm. We should be doing that. You need to be preaching against this. You need to be telling your your congregation that they go into hell if they don't if they don't vote Republican. We're telling them these lies straight from the pulpit without giving them the gospel. And you wonder why people leave church hurt, depleted, sad, going to other churches where they can now feel revived, Mm -hmm. feel rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they hungry. They're hungry for something that we, that I, I don't even know. Are we actually giving them what they want? Oneness. They want. They one, want community. Oneness is holiness. It's holiness. Oneness 
is sanctification. It is. Because when you're one with the Father, mm-hmm. when you're when you're one with the Son and the Holy Spirit, who is all one, when you're one, there is a character change. Mm-hmm. There is a motivation, there is a discipline, there mm-hmm. is a commitment. One of the things, and I was listening to um, someone as I was coming up here, bro, um, and I'm listening to how school, um, schools in the school system, and I recognize the reason because here's the thing. You can get straight A's in school, but don't have any character. Mm-hmm. Where what should be taught in school And I'm going to go back and I'm going to bring this all back around. What should be taught in school is how to develop your character. Yeah. What believers should be teaching their children is the character of Christ. Come on. I don't think we know the character of Christ. Exactly. (laughs) That's a whole nother episode. (laughs) Because if you know the character of Christ, here's the thing. You'll operate in a level of integrity, discipline, commitment, everything that you hear these people talking about. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. People have taken the principles of Christ and made it their own and become successful in it. Yeah. But we as the people of God know where the principles come from. Yeah. Yet and still, we're still struggling. We're still struggling. This is amazing to me. This is amazing. <laughs> but this is where we're at. This is where we're at. This Bro. is where we're at as a country. This is where we're at as a body, as a as a nation. If we want to be that deep as the nation of Israel, yeah. as the people of God, <laughs> this is where we're at. And, we're, and, and just so y'all know, we're the voices that are crying out. John the Baptist was a voice that cried out in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're in a experience that's inevitable. And me and my brother TJ, we're going to keep continue to do this because we stand on what we believe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Life happens. And the reason why we're able to do another podcast, the reason why I'm able to make it through what I make it through, he's able to make it through what he makes it through is because we serve the greatest power. Yeah. And I don't care what you face. I don't care what you go through. I don't care how life comes. Yeah. You always, there is a reason. There is a reason God created you. And there, let me also say with the, with that reason in mind, you have to understand. And I I have to keep reiterating this because I think what people naturally want is comfort. They want comfort away from what the world is doing away from their life and away from certain things that are happening. I can't give you a out for that. Yeah. There is no out for that in being a believer. Yeah. But he is the comforter. Woo! Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. He is the comforter through it all. He said, my burden is light. My yoke is easy. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, the reason why we're able to endure what we endure is simply because we know who our Savior is. Yeah. Our Savior is Jesus Christ. We stand on it. We believe in it. We walk it. We talk. We try to live it as best we can. We don't always succeed. But I thank God for his grace and his mercy, bro. I thank God for where he's brought me from. You know what I mean? I'm in a place of gratitude. I'm in a place of no fear and knowing who I am. It took me, you know, I have a birthday this month. And I'm, I'm getting ready to celebrate uh, 34 years, but I'm in a place where I finally understand what it is to be a Christian. Yeah, that is not that is not asking for perfection. I understand what sanctification is, is my my character is my character being changed yeah. where I'm living an example everywhere I go and any person I interact with. Yeah. Am I being impactful? Am I representing who Christ yeah. is in that moment? Because there are certain divine moments that you'll have with people and, and, and you don't even they'll be strangers. Now, I understand the, the meaning of knowing no stranger yeah. when you got Christ. Christ on the inside of you, there is a light that people are going to be drawn to when you're a believer because you're standing on something and people want to know why you're so confident. Yeah. Why do you believe the way you believe? Why do you stand like that? How yeah. do you, with everything, the chaos that is happening in our lives right now, with the, with so many deaths that are happening yeah. right now, how are you still praising God and why are you still praise? Because I know this is the shortest part of our life because I mm. know that we're going to spend eternity with the father. Yeah. I know that this always won't be how things are going to be, but right now I am a soldier in the army of God. Army of Lord. 
Come on. I am a soldier in his army. We have to be soldiers. And for those that are mature, those that, that understand who God is, we really have to do better. Uh, <laughs> I was talking to my boy because, you know, I asked the question, dang, when did we really become the adults? Yeah. When did, when did, <laughs> it happened so fast, when, right? When did that switch <laughs> that we're really now, you know, we're in charge of the cookouts. Right. We're, we're in charge of the family <laughs> gathering. Everything. And, right? You know what I mean? But and, and that also goes spiritually as well. Well, we're, we're in charge and we can no longer look and then we have to respect those who are uh, above us and whose shoulders we're standing on. Yeah. Stop, stop trying to be a general. Yeah. Just be a servant. Yeah. Stop trying to be something that you didn't earn. Yeah. That you didn't fight for. Yeah. Like I consider my grandmother a general. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, because the way she spoke to me and reminded me who God was. Mm-hmm. She said, I don't, she said, I don't care how much you preach the word of God. You remember who God is. Yeah. That's a general to yeah. me. Yeah. Because that's a person who went through so much, that experienced so much, that had to fight through so much, but yet and still believes in God. Yeah. After all that she's been through, mm-hmm. after all that she has seen, mm-hmm. still believes and her conviction is not changing. Mm-hmm. That's a general. That's a, general. That's a pillar. Yep. That's somebody that I will stand on shoulders. I will stand on. And, and, and it doesn't have to be somebody in the church house. It doesn't have to right. be somebody who's just a pastor. We honor our leadership. Honor your leadership. Take yeah. care of your leadership. Pray for your leadership. Yeah. Make sure Please. God is directing them because what's ever in their mouth is producing you and making you a better person. Right. But at the end of the day stop this foolishness over yeah. fighting over things that doesn't matter stop gossiping yeah. about people's lives that you have no idea and you weren't there through the process of everything that they had to experience yeah. everything that they had to fight through if they made it to the church house thank god that they made it to the church house in spite of what right. you may have heard mm-hmm. because you have no idea they could have took and taken their life mm-hmm. it could have been another way it, it could have been, been another, another funeral and different things of that nature we have to do better at as a people. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. Well, you preaching. <laughs> preaching. Ain't nothing to say after that. Cash apps and Venmos. <laughs> the doors of the church are open. We are passing around the collection plate. We thank God today for the word that has gone forth. <laughs> Hey man, I'm sorry, y'all. Send but y'all I, your offering to I am, well, I say, Dollar Sign. We are one faith. Listen, I am in a. <laughs> I'm grateful for every tribulation mm. trial that I have made it out of. Yeah, I'm a living testimony, man. I'm a living witness, bro. That I, I wanted to lose my mind. Yeah, but I learned how God is such a keeper. He is. Like that is not cliche for me. It's not. That's why I'm in it. I, I have a different level of peace mm-hmm. in my soul. You know what I mean? And I was telling somebody earlier, peace is priceless, but it costs so much at the it same costs time. So much. Boy, you know what I mean? It costs so much. <laughs> you, you speaking. It costs so much. <laughs> at the same time, and I can't afford to allow anything to come in between my peace. And because I got peace, I want other people to have peace. So when I see mm. people that are disturbed, when I see people who are lost, and God has given me his, his spirit, his spirit, that is our connection with yeah. God. If he has given me his spirit and I see that, I'm going to talk to it. Yeah. This is why it's important as believers. You don't just you're not just studying just to be studying. Yeah. But you're studying to learn how to be. Yeah. How to how to live, how yeah. how to be um in his in his presence on mm-hmm. a consistent basis, basis, bro. And it's That's it's, it's not it's good because you said something. Um how we are and how we're supposed to be. I believe like what you just shared, like that's it, you have an impartation of your grandmother's spirit. On you, yes, sir. Through the God that she serves, like through the Holy Spirit that's in her, it's the impartation of that in you because the fact that she's able to see, and this is why it's so important. Going back to your point, it's why it's so important that we stand on the shoulders of the older generation, the generals, yes, those sir. who have gone before us and have uh, done the, the hard things. They've done the ministry. They've done everything that we are aspiring to be. Yeah, it's because they're able to look back and see where we're at. Because they was there. Yes, sir. They have the experience. They know what to speak into and how to say to get us going and what and whatnot. And it's so important that we, we, we recognize that and we don't diminish that. Yes, sir. And it's so important that we keep that on the forefront. 
Yes, because one thing that I recognize, one thing that God has just been keeping on my heart and on my mind oh. is that he's the God of history. Come on. Meaning that he's the God who will always be there. He was there before. He was, he was, he is, and is to come. It's his story. It's his story. <laughs> <laughs> He's the yes, God sir. of history. Yes, sir. He's always been there. He's uh, Je- Je- Jehovah Shammah. He's God on, with us. Come on, come on. He has always been there. Come on. And the fact that he's the God of history is that he wants us to remember all the things that he has done for us in the past. Yes, sir. Because if he was able to do it for us in the past, yes, sir. what is he able to do for us now? Not only what is he able to do for us now, but what is he able to do for us in the future? Yes, sir. How is he able to keep us in the future if he kept us in the in the yes, past? Sir. And when we look in the Bible, when we read all these different stories, we see how God has been able to take care of his people, how yes, he's sir. always been there with them. Oh, this is a good place to go. Um, a person had talked to me about Jeremiah 20, uh, 29 and 11, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, for I know the thoughts and plans I have for you. Mm-hmm. said, the Lord, thoughts to prosper you, not to harm you. Um, and she said that um, that this person had was perplexed because the um, their pastor told them that you know that scripture is not was not for us it was for the Israelites and I was like yeah he's right but he's telling the half truth mm-hmm. because <laughs> this is how we apply it mm-hmm. yes it's, it wasn't written for us it was written for the uh, God's people the children of Israel um, because they were in the season of Babylon because he was telling them like hey I've always had plans to prosper you always had plans to take care of you. But you went the other way. You turned. You did this. You did that. And that led to your exile. That led to you being in the place that you're in. But what he said, he was like, I'm always going to be there with you. And that's the thing about God. It's like no matter what we face, what we go through, what seasons we are in, he's always going to be there with us because he's what? He's God with us. He's with us in the season of the tough of the tough seasons. He's with us when we make the wrong choice. He's with us when we have turned our backs on him and chose Babylon, chose to go into exile, chose to do those things that led us to the to destruction. He's still there with us. And the thing is, if you ever read throughout the 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 major prophets which are in the Bible like Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, um, those, if you read those through those books, you'll see that it's a constant thing. Come on, that God has always been with His people. He's always been with His people, regardless if they turned their backs on Him, and He's always been there waiting. So by the time Jesus come on the scene, it is nothing new for Jesus to go back and say, "Hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to save you from this." No, it's nothing new. It's all it's God's character all along to be there to go after the night, to go after the one. He'll lead the 99 and go after the one. That's Bible. That's Jesus. That's what Jesus said, who he is. But that also is is indicative of who God has always been. Talk, bro. All we have to do is just turn back to him. Even in this current state in the country, as we talk about, as we talked earlier about how everyone is doing all these different things, all we have to do is just turn back to him. And the Lord brought back to my remembrance this morning, um, how when I was a kid, <laughs> and I, the word has always been in me, y'all. So, I mean, there's nothing new. Yeah. But um, we had this project uh, when I was in the seventh grade. We had this project, and I had to write this thing down. Y'all can y'all can ask my teacher. Shout out to Miss Burke. She'll tell you straight up. Burke. She's still alive. God bless her. But, <laughs> but she'll tell you straight up um, about this. Um, we had this assignment. Um, I can't remember the, the full details of this assignment, but we had to write a paper about, you know, you know, how we want to, to see the, the world change. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, you know, a regular thing. Um, but for some reason, this particular scripture, you know, stood out to me. Mm-hmm. And it was, I, I can't recall the, the correct verse and whatnot, mm-hmm. but I'll tell you what it says. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, and, 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 and seek my face, uh-huh. what he will do? He'll heal the land. For some reason, that stood out to me at a kid at that time. And I wrote a whole essay or a whole sermon about the fact that we need to turn back to God (laughs) so that God can heal the land. And it's so indicative about even now, if we turn back to God, we turn back to him. He is able and just not just to heal and fix the land, but he's able and just to heal and fix and save us to save our souls. And so many people feel like they're too far gone that they can't come back to God. And that was the children of Israel. Some of them felt like they were too far gone, but God has said, I've always been there with you. 
I'm here with you. I'm just waiting for you to come back. Talk. And the thing is, is that I want people to realize is that I want you to understand that God is a God of just. He is a God of justice, but he's also a God of mercy and grace. He will always have a standard. He will always he will always make sure that things go a certain way, but he'll always have grace and mercy towards you if you choose. And that's the thing. You have to choose if you choose to turn back to him. Yes, sir. A lot of people just want to continue to stay stuck in their ways, but Jesus never intended for you to stay stuck in your ways when you encounter him. That's the problem, TJ. (laughs) And the scripture he was talking about was second Chronicles seven. Thank you. Yes, sir. And and it's, and I want to go back to what you were talking about concerning. He um, talking about Jeremiah 29 and 11. He said, I have truth. Here's the problem with that. Because I see things differently. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. Under the sun. So what that tells me is that history repeats itself always. So regardless of when it was written and how it was written, it's still relevant for this time. Always relevant. Because there is an expected end. uh, If we're reading the book of Revelations, we already know how things are going to turn out. Mm -hmm. There are going to we're going to be in glory. There are going to be certain things. People who believe who believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he came, that he rose again with all power. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Everybody else. I'm sorry. It is what it is, whether you believe it or not. That's up to you. That's between you and you.